Hey, hey, everybody. So I was reading an article in the New York Times, and they were talking about how, well, I'll show you, how retro, retro web design from the 90s is making a comeback. Well, I don't know if it's making a comeback, but at least some people are get digging it. And um, so I figured I'd vlog about it because I, I know that a lot of people watch my vlogs because they want to get the perspective of uh, a crusty old nerd such as myself. And I have to admit, when I read that article they were talking about, anyway, you can go look it up in the New York Times, but they brought up a few things, the design considerations of the 90s, if you will, or the lack of design considerations, animated GIFs and uh, marquee tags, I wonder if the marquee tag, which was an Internet Explorer thing, I wonder if that's still, still supported by uh, Internet Explorer or any of the other browsers. I doubt it. It's one of these custom tags. Back in the 1990s, uh, Microsoft didn't take the web seriously. And then they saw it as a threat. And then Netscape, which became Mozilla, got into a big battle with Microsoft over dominance in the browser world. You had IE versus Mozilla, and each of them had their own flavors of, of HTML, if you will. And it was very, very difficult to create websites that worked on both web browsers, both major web browsers, well. So what you had to do back in those days, you had to, you had to appeal to the lowest common denominator, and you had to create web uh, sites that are really, really basic in terms of the look, simply because you couldn't use any advanced features because Mozilla or well, Netscape would do it one way, Microsoft do it the other. This is way before Chrome, Safari was a non-issue. Thankfully, uh, a movement in the late 90s, early 2000s, the web standards movement, a bunch of nerds decided to put pressure on the the big boys to say, hey, listen, you gotta, you gotta adhere to the standards so that us web designers and developers can, you know, do our jobs. It was a real pain. I remember I was on a project in the late '90s, working uh, with a, a team, and I was a hired gun. It was for a very uh, large company that went public. Well, they were a public company, and I remember one of the guys. He was a lead developer. Just to give you context. He spent about two weeks working on a calendar picker to be able to pick dates on a website. Uh, now, this may freak you out because these days you just, you know, with HTML5, you see, you, know, you put, I think it's the calendar object or the date object, I forget now, but it's, it's just so easy now, or jQuery. But back then, woof, it was really difficult because, again, the browsers didn't play nice. And a lot of times, one of the strategies people would utilize, they would, they would, do browser sniffing to check which browser you were using and direct you accordingly to, for, first to different basically a different site almost same url but you know different pages for netscape different pages for ie and then it got more sophisticated they would use uh, dynamic page technology like php or classic age asp etc to uh to rewrite the page, rewrite the code in the page according to which web browser, and sometimes even which version of the web browser that was visiting your site. It was a nightmare. Uh, but fortunately these days in 2017, the game is a lot easier. You stick to the standards, you'll be fine. That being said, in those days, because of the rapid change in the technology, you had to always be on top of what was coming out, the new uh, server-side tech that was coming out, for instance. So I'll give you an example. In the early 90s, everybody was doing Perl CGI, CGI-based programming, common gateway interface. This is the early way in which you would create web apps. And then Microsoft came out with page-based uh, framework, if you will, for web app development, and it was something called ASP. Today they call it classic ASP, nobody uses it, it's way too old now. But this was a huge leap forward over CGI. And I remember I, had, I did one gig in particular where I took a CGI-based web app that the company spent a year developing and I was able to develop it in classic ASP in one month. 
not because I was an amazing programmer, just because that the classic ASP technology was so far ahead of pro CGI in terms of productivity. Why do I mention all this? Well, it's a question that comes up to a lot of, it's a question rather that comes up with a lot of uh, learning developers, budding developers, they're wondering about the new framework that's out. Uh, or should I jump into the new language? Should I jump into, you know what I mean? They're worried about the technology changes and they're worried that they're gonna miss out on the next great super productive thing. Um, in terms of the web stack, if you're looking at web development, all these frameworks, all these tools are all kind of neck and neck in terms of their capabilities, in terms of their productivity enhancements. So whether you're getting into Ruby or you're getting into PHP Laravel or Python Django or Java Spring, you're gonna be in good hands in any of these situations. It's not like it used to be. So I wouldn't be so concerned about the latest version of uh, some framework coming out or some CSS framework. These things, uh, their productivity enhancements or what they bring to the table in terms of enhanced productivity, there we go, that's better, is not nearly as profound as it was back in the day in terms of technology shifts. So if you just learned your vanilla PHP Laravel, you're set. You're doing great. You learn Ruby on Rails, you're fine. You learn P you learn Python Django, you're fine. You know, you don't have to worry about getting into the latest JavaScript based framework, Node and uh, I forget the, the, the other frameworks that come around JavaScript these days. There's, I look at it and in certain small circumstances, each framework or each language will have certain advantages in certain situations, in certain circumstances. But in terms of overall capabilities, they're all very similar, so I wouldn't be so concerned about that. Anyway, you might wanna pop over to the New York Times to pick up, to take a look at that article. It's actually uh, an interesting read. Um, yeah, I'll just show it again, just in case. There you go.